Hello friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way. It is a hot, hot, humid day. The air is so heavy and uh, it's crazy. Um, and if you didn't know, I live off grid, so we do not have air conditioning here. Our house stays very nice and cool as long as we leave the windows open at night to get the cooler air. And then we close them up in the morning as the sun comes up and close the shades. But boy, it's been hot overnight as well, so it doesn't cool down very much. Um, it cools down to about the 70s at night. So I mean, as long as I can keep it around the 70s in the house, it's pretty good. But it does take a while to cool down <laughs> once you go outside and come back in. So uh, let's get started with this. We are going to do a trash to treasure. My sister had these, I think they were um, uh, creamer bottles, you know, for your coffee, the coffee creamer bottles. And she gave them to me and she said, I don't know, I thought maybe you could do something with these. And I say these because I had two, uh, or I have two. Um, but we're only gonna be working with one today. Um, and I'm going to show you what I'm gonna do with them. All right, so you're gonna need a box cutter. And I took this top off and we're gonna cut right around the top here. As straight as we can. I don't know how straight we're gonna be able to do it. But. ish not too bad just had a little bit of a boop there okay and so then what I want to do is make it so that this top will fold in on itself so we're gonna cut because this is kind of instead of it's the, not really a round bottle it's kind of a square bottle actually um, we're going to cut each corner down um, probably down to the line. Let's see if I can I'm get through. I wonder if scissors would work better. I do have some here. Oh yeah, that works much better. So I don't know if you can see. And so I'm just going to each corner and I'm just cutting into almost the rib on this. Just so it will it's basically down to the rib all the same okay so we've tried the hot glue gun it's not working I think it's too hot um, for it to just it just will not harden I don't really know why it won't stick so um, I went and found some duct tape some really good duct tape and I have a little bit left out of my Stash, and I'm hoping that'll be enough to hold it down. So we're just gonna do that right over the top. You're not gonna see it, but I just want, oh there, that works perfectly. Okay, I just want this shape because this is like a beehive shape, which is what we're making. And it's gonna be all covered up with this nautical rope jute so that'll be fine and you do need to get started the first row or two with your glue now I'm hoping and see I'm just putting it around I'm just gonna put it around the bottom with a little bit of a lip so the rope is what it's gonna be sitting on not the plastic when it gets done And that way I won't have to cover up the bottom at all if I don't want to. You won't be able to see it when it's sitting on a shelf. And we're gonna go all the way around. I'm just holding it for a second just to make sure that it's gonna stick because it's just not wanting to today. Although it doesn't line this jute. 
I think it just doesn't like to stick onto itself, which I get. Which is what I feel like I've been doing today. Okay, so there's the bottom. So then you just go up to the next level and you just go around the bottle. And you don't have to glue these, but you do want to make sure that you're pushing down on your rope so that you can't see through it. Now you could paint your bottle, but I think it's going to be a tight enough weave on there so we shouldn't even see anything through it at all. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start over here where I ended the last row. And I'm going to put it right up close, as you can see. And a little bit going around the corner. Oops, get off there. Getting all stuck to everything here. Right around the corner and again, make sure you push down. And I think I will end with gluing it because, um, you know, this last section, just because it's coming up near the edge and I don't want it to risk it falling or coming off. And I'm going to try to put a hanger on the top. So if I wanted to, I could hang it. Um, and I like the look of that with the hanger on it. So. Okay, so for the top, you go around almost all the way, and then you take, make your loop, and you're going to stick the other end in there so that you have your loop in it. And just put a lot of glue. And then I'm going to cut as close to my loop as possible. Maybe. Tuck it down in there. Now I'm probably going to want to glue, glue, glue. Put a lot of glue there. There. Let's turn it so this will be the this will be the front. And you can manipulate this any way you want as long as you put a little glue in there. You can find your front and just turn. Turn your little loop, put a little glue, and then just hold it and let it dry. And I think I'm going to have just enough, maybe a little bit extra, to make the door. So I'm not going to actually cut, but I am going to make a circle and glue it on there. And I'm going to paint this black so it looks like you're going, you know, you can see inside. But boy, does that make that heavier with all that on there. So hopefully I explained that. You want to make, you want to bring your piece around, make your loop, and then tuck in what, what you have extra and cut it off. And just glue, glue, glue. And then find where you want your door and have your loop facing that way. I think that's great. That is so, so super cute. Okay. I want to make a cute little doorway, kind of like so, for my cute little beehive. 
So I'm just making, I don't know how big I want it, probably not that big. Something like that. And then I just want to cut And you want to find your front. This is going to be my front. And I'm going to put this off to the side. And I'll show you why in a minute, why I'm going to do that. Um, I have an idea. Now you could do your, your, your black in the middle before you put your doorway on. But I'm afraid if I do that, I'll go too far. And I have a little brush here. I think I can, I can get in there nice um, without making too much of a mess. Let's hope. I'm just trying to glue that end down because it's. There's a little doorway. So now. Wipe my brush off. And I have some ink, Waverly uh, ink chalk paint. And I'm just going to go inside and paint it black. So that it looks like a little doorway and you can see inside. bad spot so you can't even see it and then we're going to take this other one and stick that one right over that so that the button kind of doubles it up and makes it look fuller makes it pop right out there little B buttons because that's all I could find but they don't look very primitive rustic to me so this is what I did I wanted to make their wings bigger number one and I took my antique Waverly uh, wax and I put it on to the bee to just kind of grungy it up. You see that? And so I have them, I've had them over here drying a little bit. And then what I thought I would do is just take my paper towel and clean it off oh, just a little bit. So you can still see the yellow some but it's mostly very primitive, dark, and it fits what I'm doing. So here's my little bundle that I made with my, my loops on both sides and my little B, you can see that. And what I wanted to do was glue my little B somehow onto that and then just kind of stick it up it's a button, so it has like a little button hole, uh, button, um, button ring on the back of it. So something like that I wanted to do. And I don't know, it doesn't, it just looks like a dirty bee right now, but I like it better than this bright yellow bee. go. So that's with the little B on there. And just make sure those two edges kind of boop out a little bit. Hold that down so it'll stick. Nothing wants to stick today. It's too hot. It only wants to stick to me for some reason. There we go. 
Oh my gosh, guys, this came out so cute. Don't you love it? It's so adorable. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about um, Christmas in July um, fairies that Dana at Wonderlust Crochet uh, has started. She started it last year. Um, it's a giveaway collaboration. So what you do is you uh, put out a video starting July 1st, and I'll put the rules and I'll put Dana's video down in the bottom uh, in the description so that you can go check it out and see if you want to do it as well. But starting on July 1st, there will be videos coming out of people that are participating in the Christmas for July fairies, which is you comment down below in the comment section of that particular video. By a certain date in the middle of July, we take all those names and we put them on a random comment picker. We pick a name, we send it off to Dana, and she picks a prize. She picks one name to win a prize from every single channel that participated. It's a lot to um, undertake as far as um, telling you everything that needs to be done. And I've already started this, this thing for the video, so uh, it would take a little bit longer. But what I'm gonna do is put Dana's uh, information, if you wanna participate, down below. You can watch her video. I'm also gonna put down uh, um, a friend of mine, Charlie's YouTube channel. He is uh, Christmas on Crestline. And he did a, an interview with Dana, and they talked about Christmas for uh, Christmas in July fairies, um, that and why she started it, and some of the rules and things like that, and why the rules are the way they are. So um, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to my channel recently, and who have at all. I really appreciate it, uh, and I hope that you're enjoying some of the little things that I'm bringing along to you, and. Uh, I really enjoy com having you comment and talking back and forth and having a great time. And congratulations to Best Yet Journey for winning the uh, chicken decor hanger that I made. Um, I'm hoping that she is enjoying it and um, I had a lot of fun making that. So I hope she's enjoying it and it's in her girl cave. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and have a great day.